Hey guys, it's Shelly with the Lemonade Store, and um, I am very close to a forest um, fire that is kind of like up the hill from us. And so, if you hear helicopters, um, they're getting water back and forth. But because of that, it kind of inspired me to do a little um, Crayola and watercolor mixed, uh, mixing it all up and coming up with thankful because super thankful for all the firefighters and everybody out there who is responding. We actually had voluntary evacuations yesterday and I went ahead and left and I'll, I'll put on the screen a picture of the smoke because it was, it was intense and I'm like, oh my gosh, yeah, let's just, let's just be safe. So anyways, I just wanted to show you this fun little technique. Hope you guys are doing well and I'll see you later. Thanks. Okay, okay, so I started out with just doing some lettering in my bouncy style um, format and I'm just using a regular Crayola broadline and some watercolor paper. So you want to use, I wanted to use watercolor paper because I'm going to add water and watercolor as we go along and regular paper isn't going to cut it. So if you're interested in um, you know, trying the bouncy style. I did add some new uh, worksheets to my Etsy store, and I will link to those um, below for you. Um, There's just worksheets that you can print out and then practice um, how to do it. So first, I'm I'm trying it a couple different ways because you know that's what you do. You experiment, and I wanted to kind of see. Um, you know, in the past, I always add water and then I dip in color. And I started that um, at the, the beginning, and it worked. It worked fine, but but I think what when I really like to see the effect that I ended up with was when I I actually just went s dipping straight into the watercolor and then adding that to the the brown. And I don't know, it's because I don't usually I tend to lean towards like cooler colors, so. I was inspired by the flames, and that's why I'm doing like browns and and oranges and yellows, and it, it really actually came looks really cool, super fall-like. So um, it, I'll speed this up a little bit so you can kind of watch it, and then we'll add some shadow to this and some other details as well. Okay, so you want to make sure that you thoroughly let the water dry because um, even when it's completely dry I notice that sometimes it will smear a little bit when you add like a shadow but I like that effect so um, just something to kind of to kind of be aware of and I'm using um, a lighter shade of a Crayola super tip and um, what you see me doing is if I get too much of the paint like on the tip of it, I will wipe it off on um, a scratch piece of paper. That way the, um, the color is more true and it's not smearing all over the watercolor that I already laid down. So it's kind of a fun process. I do have an older shadow video. If you're interested in watching that, I will um, try and do one of those cards up above so you can watch that but I probably need to redo that one, I think. Um, 
But anyways, so I'm gonna do one more thing, add some highlights after we're done with the shadow. And I'm gonna keep this running slow so that you can kind of see how I usually do my shadows. And I, I seem to always do it with my shadow on the right side. That's kind of funny. I don't know why I do that, but you just get into a habit, I guess. So um, I'll add some highlights next, and then that really kind of makes it pop. I love how there's so many different colors of the Crayola. It's like the color I chose to do this shadow. You, a lot of people just choose gray. I choose gray all the time. But I think it's kind of fun to give it um, some dimension by adding a different shade. And it doesn't always have to be like matchy matchy. But I was kind of going for that like uh, ember look, you know, like from the fire. So um, that's kind of why I went with that. But it's a cool color that I probably wouldn't have necessarily gone to. Okay, so the final step is I grabbed some white paint. I like the Dr. PH Martin's Bleed Proof White or Copic has their Copic White. And I test I tested it on a scratch piece of paper. I always do that, so if you don't do that, maybe get in the habit of that. Just make sure that you kind of have it, you know, see how the colors are gonna work before you you ruin your piece. And I totally learned that the hard way. But you know, scratch piece of paper works every time. So I am just doing um, not a precise line because I want it to kind of look like highlights, but um, I'm doing a white line in between the shadow and the watercolor. I kind of like the way that looks. And then I just top it off um, with adding a few of those white lines on the letters as if there is a reflection in them just to give them that little extra pop off the page. And I change this up all the time. Sometimes I do two dots, sometimes I do one. Whatever makes you happy. Just experiment, see what you like. But I do like the end result of how it looks. So. Thank you so much, you guys, for watching. We are safe over here, and we just want to appreciate all of our fighter fighters in Orange County. You guys are awesome. And hit that like, the like button and subscribe if you are enjoying the content. And we will um, keep getting stuff out as we can. Thanks, you guys, and hope you're having a great day.